Hello everyone, so in this video I want to solve an example for calculating hydrostatic pressure forces on curved surfaces. So uh, hopefully after solving this example you should be able to solve any similar problem for uh, calculating the hydrostatic pressure forces on uh, curved surfaces. Okay, so let's get started. So the question that we have is as follows. So we want to solve and uh, calculate the hydrostatic force that is applied into this uh, curved surface. So imagine we have this curved surface here, we have some water here, and then we want, the question asks us to determine the horizontal and vertical forces due to the water acting on this curved surface C, D, A, B with width of one foot. What does it mean? We have one foot into the surface and uh, we need to also account for that. This can be different, like we can have uh, larger depth or uh, lower depth, like two, two feet, 0.5 foot or anything, okay? So we need to, uh, we need, this is just to consider that this problem is a 3D problem, not, to, not a 2D problem. Also, the problem gives us the gamma W, the gamma of the water, or the specific weight of water, which is 62.4 LB force, the pound force uh, foot cube. Okay, so let's get started uh, what we can do. So for the horizontal force, it's pretty easy. So uh, we need to account for two forces. First, in the left part from ADC, the horizontal force of the water, the pressure, is from left to right, right? So we have some horizontal force pressure that act on uh, this curved surface from left to right. Uh, for section AB, it's the other way around. The direction of the force is from right to left. So we need to account for that. So if we, uh, if we draw the uh, force diagram, the diagram of the pressure, the pressure forces for this problem, it looks like this. So at point C, we have some water on top, and the pressure at point C is just gamma times the height of the water on top of this point. What is that? The, the height of the water is given here, so it's four feet. We have it here, so CG, this uh, side is four feet. So the pressure force here at point C is going to be gamma times four. How about A? At A, the pressure force, the horizontal pressure force is going to be the force, the uh, uh, hydrostatic force on top of point A. Uh, so we need to, uh, we need to mm, uh, calculate the height above point A. So it's going to be uh, four, which is we have it here plus 2.12, which we have it from here. And then uh, plus 2.12 again. So it's actually from J to B, it's 4.24 feet plus four foot. So we have it from here, you can see. And then we have 0.88 foot, uh, foot. Okay, so we have these three, we have to add them together, F, J, J, B, L, A and then multiply that by gamma to get the <coughs> hydrostatic pressure. So it's going to be gamma times four plus 4.24 plus 0.88. And because again, the hydrostatic pressure uh, for a fluid at rest is uh, changing linearly with height. So this is just a simple linear function. So it's just changing linearly from gamma times four to gamma times four plus 4.24 plus 0.88, okay? And then here uh, for A to B, for the pressure, <coughs> the force at A is the same at the opposite direction. So it's gamma times four plus 4.24 plus 0.88. So it's the same as here, but for B, we just need to add 4.24 and four because that's the height of the water on top of this portion um, or this part of the section, okay? So 
this is going to be the horizontal force here for uh, this section. So again, this is a trap uh, trapezoid. And so now we have this force diagram also for the section AB. Okay. So now we can simply solve these uh, and find these forces here. So the horizontal force from uh, CDA, uh, again, uh, we can use the area of the trapezoid. So this is the formula for that. So if you have this uh, trapezoid is A plus B over two times C is going to be the area of that. So we need to calculate the area of this hydrostatic pressures and then multiply that by the area to get the force. So pressure times area is going to be the force. So let's see. First, uh, we have the gamma, which is 62.4. So I just write it down. Then we have A, which is 4. And then B here, which is 4 plus 4.24 plus 0.88 over 2. So I'm just using this formula times this AC. So if you see it here, this AC is going to be uh, 2.12 plus three feet so three feet uh, because this is the radius of from OB and it's it's a circle so it's, the radius is going to be the same OA is also three feet and uh, so this is going to be this side AC and then we also this is, remember this is a 3d problem and previously we said that the width of this is one foot so we need to account for that width here if it was two feet we should put 2 here. If it was 1.5, we should put 1.5. 0.5, we will put 1.5. So after uh, calculating this, this uh, force, uh, the horizontal force, uh, CDA, is going to be 2096. We we'll repeat the same process for uh, AB. So we calculate the area here. So 4 plus 4.24 plus 4. Plus plus 420.4 plus 0.88, which is written here over two, times this side A, B, which is given here, 0.88, times the width, which is going to give me the volume. So this is the area, and then this is the volume, the total force, the, uh, it's going to give me the total force, and this is going to be 477 pounds, okay? So this is going to be the uh, hydrostatic uh, forces and then to find the net horizontal force, we need to subtract AB, the force in the, in the opposite direction, from the force on the right direction. So FH, the horizontal force of CDA, minus the horizontal force of AB, which is going to be 2096 minus 477, is going to give me 1619 pound in the right. So this is going to be the net horizontal force that is applied by this water onto this uh, surface CDAB. Okay? So now let's go to calculate the vertical force. So what we are going to do to, do to calculate the vertical force. So if you see here, we have two vertical forces that is applied by the water to this surface. The first one is the weight over the water on top of this actually applies a force on this section CD. Okay, so it's like some weight on top of that is pushing that down. On the other hand, we have uh, some water on the bottom of this uh, section, which tries to push the, push the section up through buoyancy force, like FV. Uh, to the up. So we have these two forces, one that is pushing this up and one that is pushing this down. Okay. So what am I going to do to, to find these forces? So the first force is pretty simple. So you will just need to calculate the weight of the volume CDEG on top of this section. And if we find the volume of this, then multiply that by um, the density we are going to get, and then time, uh, time g, we are going to get the weight of this water on top of that, and that's how much uh, force, vertical force is applied to this part. Okay, so that's easy. How about this part? So this part is a little bit more challenging. What I'm going to do to simplify this kind of uh, problem. So 
we are going to use a technique that I uh, also talked about it on in your first homework. We are going, as you know, the, uh, for a, the hydrostatic pressure forces for a fluid at rest is not varying in horizontal direction. It's the same everywhere. If you don't have any acceleration, you are, you are in a steady flow and the flow is at rest, it's not moving, then the horizontal the pressure forces are not going to vary in x direction otherwise we are going to have some motion in the horizontal direction so for a fluid at rest the pressure is the same everywhere here so in the same horizontal direction and it's only a function of depth so it's just increasing as you go deeper and deeper in water so I can simply assume that uh, in order to calculate this I can take this part into the water so what I'm going to do is I will take this into the water and uh, move this to the this section to the left and then what I'm going to see is the weight of the water on top of this section so I can simply calculate the weight of the water on top of this section and this weight of water should balance this vertical force that is applied by water here so we don't have any motion so because of Newton's second law, the sigma f should be zero. So this weight of water should balance this one. Okay, so this is just an imaginary section. Uh, so if we move this to the left in order to calculate this uh, vertical force that is applied on this um, dB section. Okay, so if we do this, um, so this force is up and this force is down. Let's do that. So the downward force, Fv, is the, the, we need to calculate the weight of volume of D, E, G, D, or C, D, or D, C, D, C, E, G, D. This is the volume of this. And then for the upward force, we need to calculate the volume of D, A, D, uh, let me see, yeah, D, B, uh, F, E, D. So D, B, F, E, D. Okay? So that is what we need to calculate. Okay? And this is A. So D, A, B, F, G, E, D. So that's going to be the volume that we need to calculate. Okay? So, um, and I don't want to waste my time here uh, to uh, recalculate these two times because it appears both in this volume and this volume. So I can just subtract that. So what's going to happen is the, the net vertical force is going to be the upward force of DAB, okay, DAB, and then the downward force uh, that is applied to DC. So the upward force that is applied to DAB and minus the downward force from this. So it's going to be this volume here, the whole volume, minus this small volume. Okay, so we need to subtract this. So eventually, what we need to calculate is just these colored sections, the weight of the volume of these uh, colored sections. So the rectangle GFJC, the triangle CJB, and the semicircle C, D, A, B. So this is three uh, uh, shapes that we need to calculate their volume and their weight to find the net vertical force that is applied to this uh, section. So as you see, it's been very simple now. We can simply calculate that. So uh, let's first, uh, the weight is, uh, I'm going to multiply 62.4 times the area, the gamma of water times the area, to get to get this so the area of this rectangle g f j c is simple we can simply calculate that so we have it here so it's going to be 4.24 times 4 so it's a simple uh, rectangle here right so we have it here 4 times 4.24 for the triangle this triangle uh, is going to be 4.24 times 4.24 over two, right? So that is what we have here. And then for the semicircle, the air, the radius is three feet 
So it's going to be PR squared is going to be the area of the whole circle and the semicircle, the area is going to be P point times three square over two, right? It's a half a circle. And then we need to multiply this again by this one width because it's a 3D thing. It's the width of this into this, into this page, uh, into the surface. And again, this can be different. And if you calculate this, it's going to be 2,501 pound upward. So we have an upward force that is applied to this uh, section, okay? So the net total force of this system is going to be uh, from the horizontal we found it, it's uh, 1,619 pound to the right. And then uh, the vertical one is 2,501 pound, okay? So the total force is going to be square root of FH square plus FV square, which is going to be 2,501 square plus uh, 1,619 square, square root of all of that, which is going to give us 2,979 pounds. So this is the net total force that's going to be in that, in this direction, okay? And then you can also simply find the, uh, the direction of the force, uh, which is, it's just going to be, you need to calculate a tangent of theta, which is going to be, this theta is going to be 2,501 over 1,619. Okay, so you can also find the direction here because you know this uh, x component and y component, and that's going to be the tangent of uh, that um, that uh, that angle. Okay, so this is simply how we can solve this problem, and uh, you can find determine the uh, vertical and horizontal forces on this uh, curved surface. So using this technique, you can actually um, uh, solve a lot, uh, a lot of similar problems uh, where we have these curved surfaces. So for horizontal force, it's very simple. You can just put them uh, like this. And for the vertical force, you can, if, if you see something like this, you can uh, assume uh, an imaginary section and move that toward the water, inside the water, and calculate the weight of wa the water on top of that section. Okay, thank you very much everyone and hope uh, this was helpful for you.